Welcome back to the PTZ Camera Operator Handbook. We're finally talking about what makes a good camera operator. What are the traits that make a good camera operator? What are the best practices in a variety of settings that makes you a good camera operator? Let's get into it. So here's my co-host Tess. She's been a camera operator with me for many years. And in this book so far, we've talked about the state of the industry, what a PTZ camera is. We took apart a PTZ camera to look inside. We've talked about who uses PTZ cameras, the different types, the remote control. We've really gone through everything up to being a good camera operator. And good camera operators have focus, right? You, you have to remain focused and have some type of attention to detail because your job is to reveal details. You are, your job is to show the viewers of your video or your live stream or your webinar what they want to see and uh, grab the attention not just for you to be attentive the entire time but thinking of the attention that you're keeping visually for your viewers and uh, number three here and this actually comes from a list an industry standard list coming from like things you need to be a, uh, to be a good camera operator is you do need to work well under pressure now we're not saying it's a stressful job it's not necessarily a high stress job, but there's a little bit of pressure to perform in many scenarios because what you are recording is generally happening live. You are participating in an event, whether it's a webinar or a live stream or a recording where you could shoot it again, um, but still, you know, it's happening live. What you're doing is not kind of low pressure where you're behind a computer screen and you can take your time. This is a live production environment. So you will need to have excellent listening skills and you'll need to be a team player. And being a team player takes the pressure off you. You need to understand your responsibilities, understand how you can work as a team with the producer, with other camera operators, with the talent, and understand the flow of what's going on. And we're going to talk about sports. We're going to talk about television, broadcast, studios, and then general purpose video productions. And no matter what type of production you're on, these traits are going to be important. Now, hand-eye coordination is clearly going to be important for a variety of reasons. But the first one that comes to mind clearly is you need to see what you're doing and you need to move your hands in coordination with what you want to happen. So excellent hand-eye coordination is crucial to be a camera operator. And one of my favorites is being creative, right? This is a creative job. This is for you to be creative and you can be creative and have discipline at the same time. So it's a creative job. If you enjoy uh, video, if you enjoy um, art, if you enjoy production, if you enjoy watching videos, you can now be in the, in the creation seat, but you're gonna have to have the discipline to understand the goals of your project and apply your creativity in a constructive way, which is fun, but it requires discipline. Now, some of the popular camera operation scenarios that are discussed in this book is the television scenario, where we're talking about high-level webinars, high-level productions, TV-level productions. We'll talk about sports. And then we'll just talk about general productions, which is probably where the largest growth is, just like any company, any business trying to get their marketing message across. Now, we looked at a few television case studies. Uh, this one was from the BBC in South Africa. But in no matter what company you're at, professional video content has become important to businesses small and large. And in some cases, businesses are expected to create television quality content. They certainly want the content to be good enough to show their brand in a good light. And that's become more and more important. And that's why camera operators are being hired. Camera operation is a key, important part of the whole video production process. In this process, and especially in television, there's a tool called a tally light. It's often used in television studios to communicate with their talent. And I've got a bunch of tally lights in this studio here that I can show you live. And I think that would be um, important to do. Actually, in fact, why don't I go ahead and do that right now? And then I also want to show some slides showing why these, these tally lights are important. Now, in the television use case that we discussed 
for the BBC show, they were doing a dating show. And the camera operations were almost more of a security camera application where the cameras were meant to be discreet and hidden in the background. And the camera operations slowly zoomed in to frame up the shots that was supposed to be a date where, you know, so there's a lot of different types of television scenarios, but tally lights themselves will turn on to let the production people know what's going on. It's like a nonverbal form of communication where you can say, oh, this is going on right now. This is the camera that's live. And then on the back of the tally light, you'll see that there's a light that shows this is what's coming on next. And I want to show that really quickly uh, right now just to give you guys an idea of some of the tally lights in this studio. And then we'll go from there. Let's see if I have control of this camera. Okay, great. So we're going over this way. And uh, there's actually a tally light that's on right now that I will show. So this tally light right here, again, it's lighting up to show us that this camera is live. Okay, so uh, there's the tally light. I'm going to zoom right into it. There's five little LEDs on the back. This is from tallylights.com. And then there's one green LED on the back. And if you are on camera, okay, if you are in a production, you want to be able to know which camera to look at at any given time. And this is becoming so important, not just for camera operations, but also for on-screen talent. A lot of times the video producers are in a different room. They might even be on the other side of the world. And so the people on stage or in the production area will know which camera to look at at any given time. Whether they're holding a product that they need to show to the camera or they need to make eye contact with the camera, these tally lights are super important for video production. Now, when we talk about different types of camera shots, there's a, quite a few that uh, are important to consider. And the extra long shot is the first one that you should be considering because it's an establishing shot for your production. And this is very popular in television. It's very popular in video production. And what I want to do is go ahead and show you an example. So here's my studio. Now, if I was in a big television studio, I might use this shot in the very beginning, and then I would slowly zoom into the talent, right? But that would be my extra wide shot. And each of these shots that we're going to discuss today, I want to show an example of, and then I want to discuss how they're used in video production. You might not be the person creating, the, um, cutting and switching between the shots. That's what the producer does. But in many scenarios, the producer is also the camera operator and they're managing multiple PTZ cameras themselves. And they set up these types of shots before they even go into the pr uh, production and hit record or start streaming. Now, the long shot is a head to toe shot. And this is a very important shot. This shot would be right about here, head to toe, right? So whether, the, whether someone starts moving and you've got their complete body or it's just a static shot where you've got them head to toe, that is considered the long shot. It's not a close up, it's a wide shot. You can see the whole body of the person. The next shot that we'll talk about is a medium shot. And a medium shot is gonna basically be torso up, right? So the medium shot, it gives you a really good close look at the person that's presenting here. And it gives you the, like, an idea of, all right, this is who I'm looking at, but you can still see kind of what they're talking about. You can see their hands, even if they're holding something low or high, you've got a really good idea of what is going on. And if you have three or four people on stage, like let's say I've got, uh, I'll set a preset for the person on the right for their medium shot. And let's say there was someone standing over here. I might have a preset number four for their medium shot. And you can quickly go back and forth between medium shots. Now we, we turn the preset speed down so it's nice and smooth. That might even work for you if you wanted to go back and forth or you might even go manually back and forth depending on what you need to do. But that's the medium shot. Now the medium close up is ideal for like emotion. So you're, go, you're getting even closer here and you know, you're, you, you can see it's, it's, it's a different shot. It's, it's definitely a different shot here. This is the medium close up. And then finally, we have the complete close up. Okay, this is reserved really just for specific 
times, but like this would be like for a really big uh, emotional uh, call to action. But the cool thing is here that what you're seeing is this is tons of different shots, right? Variety of different shots and scenarios with one PTZ camera, okay? Remotely controllable. We're getting all of these shots from one camera that's mounted somewhat far away, right? Out of the way. Viewers can't see them. Now you can see this one up here that we've been using from time to time to capture some shots um, throughout our production. But, you know, we have got a lot of camera shots here that are available from a single camera. So that is one of the huge takeaways from video production with a PTZ camera. Now the types of camera shots that we can get, you can hand draw these and get a shot composition plan together. And this is where that communication and working with a team can come into play. Go over the types of shots that you might want to use as a camera operator with your team, even if it's just you, and then write out where, what are the presets? What is the story that you are trying to tell? Now, we talked about camera shots. Now let's talk about camera movements. The three main ones are obviously pan, tilt, and zoom. Now, zooming in is a great way to build up viewer interest in a specific object. So consider those, you know, medium and wide shots and then think about, huh, do I want to come in closer to show more detail? And do I want to do that slowly with a PTZ movement? Right? That's where the zooming can come into play. And zooming can look really good. Like that's a nice zoom out, right? When you're revealing something. Or you could do a slow zoom in where you are slowly revealing something more detailed. This is one of the most powerful tools. And you can pan and tilt at the same time. So you can include pan and tilt as you are zooming. Now, this camera in particular, I am not sure if it has an important um, feature that I'm just going to show now, which is the ability to, let's see, let's go into enter here, speed by zoom. Okay, so speed by zoom is on. That means as you zoom in, the speed will slow down. And that's a feature that we're going to discuss in our next area um, as well of this book. But so zooming can be combined with pan and tilt. And all of these can honestly be combined and they can all be restricted by speeds. And we've discussed a lot of that. Now the left to right movements, the panning movements, this is ideal for obviously following a subject and you want to give yourself that space. You want to zoom out and use that. The tilting it up and down is obviously good for revealing objects as well. Now, in a sports environment, you this is one of the most challenging environments for capturing because it's a lot of fast movement. So any camera operations that are happening will require an in-depth knowledge of the game. There's so many different sports. There's table tennis, there's soccer, there's baseball, there's football. The list goes on and on. You are going to need to know the type of sport. Where does the ball go? You might need to follow the ball. As a camera operator, you're going to need to keep your eye on the game and give yourself space to let the play develop. And this is important in sports production. You want to give yourself space so that you don't lose the ball. The producer might be counting on you to capture. And again, if you have a tally light, you'll know, oh, my camera's live. You know, I, I am on live right now. I need to keep the play within the space. And we talked about uh, education use case at the SAR Broadcast Club in the Bronx, New York, where the camera operator is the producer. You know, sometimes you're, you're doing both jobs and you've got, this is Wirecast on the left and then the PTZ camera controller joystick on the right. Now, there's always going to be best practices. And I always want to try to let you guys know about best practices. And this is one that applies specifically to sports where cameras, it's 180 degree camera rule where all the cameras should remain on the same side of the field. It should not move. It should only move within 180 degree radius of the subject. If you start putting cameras on both sides of a field, cam uh, viewers get disoriented about which way they're looking and which way the ball is moving. So always try to stick to 180 degree camera roll, even if you're talking about something like tennis or basketball where it's left or right or, go, or even um, baseball, for example. Now, this rule can be thrown out if we're talking about instant replay, right? If we're talking about uh, something that's not like live, it's happening after the fact. You can throw in different camera angles 
during an instant replay, and a lot of places have instant replay cameras. If we have four cameras, okay, that um, this is a very popular sports in high school, soccer, baseball, where we've got four cameras. A lot of times, two PTZ cameras are deployed in the middle, in midfield, right, right in the middle, and they're called the high and wide and the high and tight. And the reason why is because those cameras can get up high, they can be remotely controlled, and they can be used to follow the game from a high level. So you can really see all the players on the field. You can follow them left to right. Now, the high and wide stays wide, right? It, it, it follows the play to get the full play, and it won't miss anything. And then the high and tight is getting in there to show close-ups, to show the goalie, to show the quarterback. And the high and tight is more difficult to capture, you know, to use, but the producer can switch between those two and really get, you know, what they need. Now, there's still no, you know, way to get around a lot of times sports using real cameramen on the field with over-the-shoulder cameras. A lot of times they can use wireless connectivity to do that, cameras with battery packs, but those guys are able to really capture the, the field from, you know, the viewpoint of being on the field and capture a lot of detail, and they might go left and right um, of the, you know, of, of the two main cameras in the center. Now the high and wide camera, you probably want to set your pan speed to low, right? To slow. You don't want to pan real fast and jerk all around. In the high and tight, you might need to go a little faster because you're zoomed in and you're trying to follow and capture, you know, things that are happening really quickly. Now something we haven't talked about yet is something called a pan and tilt limit. You can limit how far the camera will move left, right, up, and down. So if you have a limit on your tilt on the left and your tilt on, or sorry, pan on the left and pan on the right, your camera will never go past that limit. And therefore, if you're following a play all the way to the end zone, you're excited, you're going fast, the camera will automatically stop before you overshoot the home court, right? Or the, the, the touchdown area. So that's a very popular tool for sports, but it works in any application where you don't want to overshoot the the end zone. Now in general productions, right? Like this production here, here we are in our studio here in Westchester, Pennsylvania. And this is the Stream Geek studio. A lot of times, you know, we're just making marketing videos and we're just trying to do our best to make great video content for our productions. And in our scenario, a lot of times the same person who is the video producer is also the camera operator. So here in this video production area, I kind of wanted to just show quickly a couple of the things that we do here that makes our job easier and more valuable to us anyway. And I'll show this with a wireless camera. This is the view from the producer's area. And a lot of times you can have multiple sets. You can see here we have one set here. We've got a second set here, which is ideal for like a post show discussing with an online audience. And then we've got this main space here that we present from. One tool that I wanted to mention is this confidence monitor. This is a monitor that we can look at very quickly. Even though we're looking into the camera, this is a, a monitor, it's called a confidence monitor, that allows us to see quickly what is going on. Is it a B-roll video? Is it the intro clip? Is there a countdown timer? Anything the producer's doing will show up there. And then, as you, know, as you can see here, each of these cameras has a tally light. So we'll know which camera's live at any time. So I know you've seen the studio already in our um, video production uh, videos in the past, but just wanted to show, you know, then we have a separate computer over here that I generally will operate to control this monitor. It is possible to use uh, a technology called NDI, which we'll talk about later to uh, remotely control what is on a monitor, and we do that regularly. It's actually really great for showing like social media clips. And then this is a Windows tablet, but you can use almost any uh, web device with a web browser. This is actually how I can control the presentation. So if I hit full screen there, it's gonna switch back to that. If I go back to the phone, it goes back to the phone. So just give you an idea of some of the things, that's my full, my 30x camera full screen. So just giving you some ideas of things that you can do as a video producer. That's always an important part of the online tutorials that we do. So key takeaways, 
To be a good camera operator, you really need to have focus, attention to detail, and a passion for video. I would say that this is not a job for a lot of video producers. This is a career. This is an art. And if you're looking at it through that lens, no pun intended, you're going to enjoy what you do and you'll do a great job and everyone will enjoy the results of your work. So that is it for this video. Let's keep going along with the PTZ camera operator guide. There's so much more to learn. We're getting into the more advanced, deeper dive sections. So stick around and I'll see you guys in the next video.